Okay. So at first, <clears throat> Jesus, sorry, my, my throat is gone. I don't know why, I'm probably talking too much shite. But <clears throat> I'm going to try and speak for a few seconds here. Uh, at first, I want to say, I know it's not good to be pessimistic, but I want to talk about why I feel like the new Jeepers Creepers film won't be a success. And there's layers to a successful horror film. And not what Randy was saying, like, we aren't, you know, talking about rules to survive one, but more so rules to make one. So think about it like this, okay? You first saw Jeepers Creepers 1 at a young age, quite possibly, right? And your first introduction is minimal, but it's very impactful. And here's the thing with horror films. Once you open the lid, fuck, I can't speak. Sorry, one second. Once you open the lid and you get a peek at the monstrosity that is the creeper, you can't really get back to where you were when you watched the film for the first time. I know I'm talking like a madman, but hear me out for a second. With horror films, the introduction to a character can rarely be topped. And I think Jeepers Creepers 2 was an example of a close catch, but there were reasons for its success. With horror films, it's not new to see endless sequels and remakes, and, and with the seemingly perpetual proliferation of bad sequels, you have to ask why they're not able to top the films before it. Firstly, economical gain. And look, I'm sure as hell I'm not going to sit here and force you to listen to anything you don't already know, but we do know that the art has become lost in the world of economics, and you can really tell when a company doesn't care about the story they're telling. What the hell is that supposed to mean, huh? Two classes of people? What the will be eaten and the won't be eaten? Fuck you, Scotty. And furthermore, they see it as a way to piggyback a character until the well runs dry. And we've seen it so much, we've even seen it with Halloween, you know, and A Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th. Even though a lot of the sequels were still successful, they were just not necessary. Now, from studying film, I've come to realize that even if a story is good, it's so much harder for a film to be greenlit without having a notary director already attached to the project. And that makes sequels easy to get off the ground. Uh, funny analogy, but if you think about it this way, right? If you go to the shop to buy soup, but Aaron told you that Cully and Sully made really good vegetable soup and you're at the shop and you notice soup that could be just as good as Cully and Sully but nobody's vouched for it yet, it's kind of like that. You know, a film is like a major gamble and having a big name already attached to it with previous success involved, it kind of sweetens the deal as it has much better prospects. But sorry, I'm swaying away from the actual point of the video. Jeepers Creepers Reborn, this is why I feel like it won't be nearly as good as the first two. So rewind about six or seven years ago i used to have horrible nightmares after watching the second film it was really bad man it was really really bad like i think i spoke about it before but all until one day one day on youtube i saw a video and it was the behind the scenes of jeepers creepers 2. now why is this important so a man named tim phoenix and brian Pennicas, they worked on a team of special effects makers for a company not a company but a group called the makeup and monster group and you might be wondering what was their work in the film well, Tim actually created a lot of the bodies for the church scene in the first film. And funny enough, he was actually the body of the prom king that Trisha and Dari spoke about in the car. I think, uh, I could be wrong here, but I think their name was Kenny and Darla. And um, he was also part of the team who made the animatronics for the creeper. His feet when he lifts up the couch at the bus, his nose pulsating when he sniffs, and you know, other body parts. I think there was the, you know, when his head uh, was being covered when he was going back into his hibernation. I'm pretty sure they also worked on that one too. Now, I don't want to be one of those guys, but I think CGI is ruining horror films. And it's, it's, I know it's an often talked about topic and not really a lot on YouTube, but more so, fucking Jesus Christ, my trout. More so in like, I'm in a lot of horror Facebook groups and I see a lot of it on Twitter and stuff. But I do believe that CGI is ruining horror. So let me tell you this, right? And follow me for a second. There are two Jeepers Creepers films without CGI right, with use of practical effects, and then one which didn't use practical and opted for the cheaper and more convenient option, CGI. I'm not gonna answer that, right, because I know you already know the answer for it. If you look at the third Jeepers Creepers film, it cost six million dollars in budget, and it grossed nearly four to, tr no, three to four million in return. And even when a film is highly successful, it doesn't always turn a profit, like look at Star Wars. I'm pretty sure they never made a profit, and, and that's crazy, but you can Google it. I think it's called like uh, Hollywood Accountancy or something, or Hollywood Accounting. So, uh, my point, sequels at heart are Hollywood's lucrative concept. For an industry run purely on profit, this will never change. Like, I don't feel like looking at Nosferatu, it was a film made to be a highly successful, like, profiting franchise. It was just one of those really obscure and classic horror films. You know, but that doesn't happen anymore because of sequels and then there's merchandise and then there's like marketing and there's like all sorts of crazy distribution. 
So as far as I'm aware, the fourth film will be made under the same company that made the third film. And we only know that the Creeper's original actor will be returning. No news on Trisha, no news on Jack Taggart, no news on the film if it's going to have any connection to the first one and the second one by like stories of the Creeper that townsfolk have heard. But uh, I'm going to tell you the synopsis and then I'm going to talk about what I think about it. The film unfolds as a horror hound festival holds its first ever event in Louisiana, where it attracts hundreds of geeks, freaks and diehard fans from far and wide. Among them is a fanboy named Chase and his girlfriend Lainey, who is forced to come along for the ride. But as the event approaches, Lainey begins to experience unexplained premonitions and disturbing visions associated with the town's past, and in particular, local legend slash urban myth, The Creeper. Sorry, I can't fucking read for shit. As the festival arrives and the blood-soaked entertainment builds to a frenzy, Lainey believes that something unearthly has been summoned and that she is at the center of it. He, uh, it goes on to say, as excited as we are, and this isn't, sorry, this isn't the synopsis, it's just like a word from the producer or something. As excited as we are, we know that the fans will be even more thrilled and chilled to return to the world of the Creeper, now with a much scarier vision from director Timo Verosola, I think it's his name, yeah, I probably pronounced that wrong, who is a perfect fit to restart the franchise. So, like I just said, the director for, uh, from the previous films has no involvement with the newest one, and the new director is known for Iron Sky, which is comedy slash sci-fi. And again, his name is Timo uh, Viron... Viron Viron, Viro, 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 Viro and Sola. Fucking, I cannot pronounce that, man. Fair enough, though. Nice name. Um, so, one thing I actually did take note of when I was looking up the newest film. Uh, some of you might remember the American Zeotrope logo. Same company that made Bram Stoker's Dracula in 1992. And also Apocalypse Now. And I checked up on this. And then Michael o Oven and Jake Seal are both producers for the newest film. And I couldn't find it exactly, but I believe they are part of American Zeotrope. So I think the same company is going to be making the newest film, uh, which is weird because I think it was Scream Media who are meant to be making the new film. So I'm not sure how Zeotrope uh, are, are going to be involved, but they're probably going to be co-producing it like a lot of people do with films. So, uh, and, and even actually funnily enough, I was amazed when I realized that um, Francis Ford Coppola uh, funded the company Zeotrope, which is really strange because he's a, f well not strange, but really interesting because he's like a veteran director. So yeah, it's weird. Um, Look, I, I feel like for Jeepers Creepers 4, or The Return, to be a good film, it needs to, it needs to kind of like, oomph up what made it good in the first two films. Like, the third film was all CGI, and there was no good practical effects. The Creeper looked big chunk, big chunky guy, way too massive. Didn't work in my opinion. I think for the, for the newest film, the only way it's going to work is if... Um, if they bring back uh, the makeup and, and monster group to make the, the, the practical effects for the film. And that's the issue with horror films nowadays because like I said, it's all business. And if you can easily go with CGI and make it cheaper, that's usually what people will go for, which is not really a good look because a lot of films do kind of suffer from the use of CGI. Now, I'm not being too pessimistic because I am excited for the film. But I don't really think at all it's going to work. Uh, if I'm going to be completely honest, I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it'll be successful. I think partially boycott it again. And um, the same company will do what they've done with the third film. Even with the new director involved. Fuck my throat, man, I'm sorry. Even with the new director involved, um, I just don't see it, see it to be a success. Uh, look, I'm going to end it here. Um, that's all I have to say. I do believe, though, um, if you look at the second film, Jeepers Creepers 2... The whole like ancient like there was uh, <clears throat> like soldiers fighting the creeper, you know, kind of like uh, kind of like drawings in caves, which you, which you'd see fucking in in really old films. It's kind of like that, you know. It, it, it kind of it went real far back with the lore of the creeper, but it didn't explain it. It just showed how far back it went. And I think what the third film tried to do too much was explain it vocally, uh, or, or you know, literally. Um, and it kind of ruined it, you know, we didn't need to see that. Like, there's a lot of things in Jeepers Creepers 2 I didn't pick up on until I watched it, like, for, like, the 60th time, you know? And that's one of the good things about horror films. I, I like hidden symbols. I don't really like just being told exactly what's happening, because it just... I don't want to watch it again then, you know? But look, I'm going to stop it here. Um, I will be making more videos soon. I am sick at the minute, and I'm, I'm, I'm under the water with, with like, college work. So once I get my head out of that, I'll be much better. I'm actually shooting my short film uh, this month too, in like two weeks, which I'm really excited for. It's called Love Lane, and I'll probably put it up on YouTube as soon as it's done. It's not horror, it's like a drama thriller, but 
Uh, yeah, I'm really excited for that to happen. And then I'm actually writing a feature film myself, a horror film, um, which I, I can't wait to actually talk about when it's all done, but that'll probably be like in two years, like a long time away. But look, uh, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Am I the only one who's worried about CGI being the downfall of this film? Because it was for the last one. And I just loved all of the behind the scenes for the first and second film because it was just, it was so interesting to see how they created the monster. So set him on fire! It's a weapon, man! Don't you ever watch fucking horror movies? They always shoot the thing in the mouth with a flare gun. What are you talking about, mouth? The eye, the mouth, wherever you can get him, you go for the soft spot. This isn't a movie, Dante! No, it's not a movie! What are you gonna do? You're gonna get close enough to shoot that thing in the fucking balls, huh? Hey, back off, man!